Tbomb.com. Hi, my name is Howie Gordon, and on behalf of Keybomb.com and RainComputers.com, I'd like to welcome you to part one of our Synth Basics video tutorial. If you've ever looked at a synthesizer and been completely overwhelmed at all the controls and haven't had any idea where to start, hopefully this video will shed a lot of light on that and will teach you to be able to program the sounds that you hear in your head. The type of synth that we're going to explore is called a subtractive synth, and why it's called subtractive, I'll answer that in a couple minutes. The synth that we're using today happens to be the subtractor synth, which is part of the software called Reason. Now, if you're not familiar with Reason, do yourself a favor and get familiar with it. It is an amazing, amazing piece of software with just so many possibilities for sound creation. And it is cross-platform, so it works just as well on the Mac environment as it does in the Windows environment. However, the reason we're looking at a subtractive synth is because subtractive synths are the most common type of synth on the market. And just because I'm using the subtractor synth in Reason doesn't mean this is a tutorial on that particular synth. If you can work one synth, you can work them all. They're like cars. If you can drive one, you can drive them all. They have the same basic components. So the information I'm going to be covering applies to any subtractive synth that's software based or hardware based. Alright, let's begin. What we're going to do in part one is just I'm going to give you a basic, very basic overview of the different sections and what they do. Alright, we're going to start here with the oscillator section. And the reason we're starting there is that's where the sound actually starts in a synth. Um, that's where the tone is generated, hence the name tone generator. If you think of a guitar string or a bass string, when you pluck that, what is it doing to generate sound? It's moving back and forth. It's oscillating. This is just an electronic version of the same idea. Now, um, every synth is going to have, you know, a bunch of unique waveforms loaded into it. Uh, and most of them will also come with your basic meat and potatoes waveforms. And those are the ones that I'm going to take a look at with you today. Um, the first waveform we're going to look at is this guy right here, that's the sawtooth wave, and it sounds like this. Okay, uh, you know, in this format, real basic, but uh, if you notice, it has a lot of high-end information. Moving on, the next shape we're going to look at is called a square wave, and that sounds like this. All right, not quite as sharp, uh, a little bit more throaty and wide. Moving on, our next one is called a triangle wave. Okay, not nearly as much high-end information as the sawtooth wave, so it's not as biting and cutting. Um, you know, it's a little bit more mellow. And then finally, the last one we're going to look at is the sine wave. Again, even less high-end information on that uh, on that sound. All right, the subtractor then has a bunch of other ways which they just use numbers uh, as their naming convention. We're just going to deal with you know those basic four. All right, moving on. The next section of the oscillator deals with tuning, and we can tune by octave. Okay. And then we can tune in finer gradations. Over here, this one marked semi is tuning in semitones or half steps. So if I it's set to zero and I play a C, you'll hear a C. If it's set to one and I play a C, you'll hear a C sharp. If it's set to two and I play the same C again, you'll hear a D and, and so on. Okay. Moving on, our last tuning function is marked cent. That's your fine tuning. And, you know, depending on the manufacturer of your particular synth, it might say fine tuning. So at zero, it's what we call perfect pitch or totally in tune. And as I hold the up button down, you can hear the pitch get sharper. And it also goes into negative numbers as well. 
okay? You might ask, why would I want something to be out of tune? Trust me, you're going to want to be able to tune and detune patches. Um, you know, there's a lot of really great thickening effects you can get by detuning uh, oscillators against each other. Now this particular synth has two oscillators, oscillator one, oscillator two. Most synths will have more than one, some have two, some three, some four, you know, it, they vary by design. Uh, but the purpose of that is so that I can have, you know, um, more going on in the sound. I can choose to have just one active, or I can have two act, uh, active, and you know I can have a square wave, sorry, rather, a saw wave against a square wave, and so on. So anyway, that's the oscillator section. All right, moving on to our next section, we're gonna go here to the filter section. Now, the filter section, in my opinion, is the most important part of a synth. Uh, it is what really has um, the most control over the color of the sound, and the filter section is why this is called a subtractive synth. Because what a filter does is, as the name implies, it filters out certain parts of the sound. It lets certain parts pass through and subtracts other parts from the sound. Hence, subtractive synth. So the oscillator is generating sound and the filter is selectively removing parts of it. Now, this has several different types of filters. We have a low pass, which lets lows pass through and blocks highs. And the opposite of that would be right here, the high pass, which lets highs go through and blocks lows. We have a notch and we have a band pass, and I'll get more into those on uh, our more in-depth filter tutorial. The most common kind is a low pass. And we have two controls. We have frequency cutoff and resonance. Now, frequency cutoff is basically a control that specifies the frequency at which the filter starts to engage and actively cuts off sound. So if I hold down a note, and move the slider lower, it starts to take that cutoff frequency and move it lower and lower, so less high frequency information is getting through. As I move the filter slider up, the filter opens up, and more and more high frequency information gets through. Now, what the resonance does is at that cutoff frequency that you're specifying, if the resonance is set to zero, the filter is just basically cutting off the frequencies in a flat manner. If you take the resonance and move it up, what happens is at that particular cutoff frequency, the resonance adds a little sharp boost right at the cutoff frequency, and you can hear the difference. Much more of a high-end glossy sheen to it. And if I really make it extreme and move it up further, okay, you can really hear the difference there. So here I'll leave the filter up and take the resonance down. You know, you can really hear that difference. Now, one little word of caution is that sometimes these things sound great at a low volume, but if you take it out to a gig situation and you have a lot of resonance on a patch, when this is very loud, that can split some eardrums. So you want to be careful about that one because that will cut right through a mix. All right, I'm just going to back that down a little bit and move on to our next section over here, which is called the amp section. Now, for some reason on the subtractor, it's not labeled. Um, but this is the amp section, and it really only has one control, which is marked level. And what the amp section does is it, as the name would imply, controls amplitude or volume you know or another word for that is level and that's what it's labeled it's just how loud it is all right just like a guitar amplifier makes a guitar louder this makes the synth louder or softer so it's basically your volume slider very simple 